We'll call the uh, meeting to order. This is our September 15th, 2016 council meeting. And if you would please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. Dear Lord, thank you for our families and loved ones. Thank you for our friends and pets. Thank you for the United States of America. Thank you for Canton, Georgia. Thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. And most of all, thank you for you. Your love brings meaning to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to welcome our guests and visitors here tonight. Uh, we have uh, an employee recognition, Chief Mitchell. Mayor, Council, thank you. I always think it's important to um, either uh, introduce new employees or recognize employees for uh, accomplishments. And tonight we have three of our employees that um, have just been promoted. They were promoted last week. Uh, they received their attention to orders and uh, will be going through a, a supervisory field training and then um, out on their own on the shifts. Um, uh, leading our, our uh, patrol teams. Um, to my right here, I have um, uh, Jesse Ray, Corporal Jesse Ray. Um, he has been with the organization, uh, or excuse me, been in law enforcement for almost 10 years now and been, been with the organization, I believe it's five plus years. Um, but uh, he has just made corporal and uh, we're very proud of him. And to his right is uh, Sergeant James McPherson. He's been in law enforcement for a total of six years been with the agency now for uh, I believe over three years and uh, we're very proud of him as well and then to his right is uh, Corporal Mary Turner uh, who's been with the organization for a little over two years um, so we're very proud of her as well uh, we always talk about a, um, an attitude of service and a mindset of community and uh, these three right here exude that uh, the, that uh, what we talk about and what we we, we say we want to build as a culture and organization they went through a very uh, tough assessment, um, uh, promoted last week, and uh, again, we just wanted to uh, introduce them to you as our newest upcoming leaders in the organization and the future of the Camp Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We have a uh, proclamation that I would like to read uh, regarding Constitution week, which is September the 19th to the 23rd, and I will make this presentation once I read it. Uh, we have some folks here from the DAR who will receive the proclamation. We're in September the 17th, 2016, marks the 229th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, providing a historic opportunity for all Americans to remember the achievements of our founding fathers and to reflect on the actions of Americans who for the past 229 years have defined the words of the Constitution by exercising their rights and responsibilities as citizens. Whereas the Constitution is fundamentally predicated on governance by we the people, making citizens understanding of the Constitution and its framework an essential element of the future of our country and the civic health of its populace. And whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize this magnificent document and the anniversary of its creation. And whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize the patriotic celebrations which we will commence the occasion, which will commence the occasion. 
And whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September the 17th through the 23rd as Constitution Week. Now, therefore, I, Gene Hobgood, Mayor of the City of Canton, on behalf of the Daughters of the American Revolution, High Tower Trail Chapter, do hereby proclaim September the 17th through the 23rd, 2016, to be Constitution Week in the City of Canton, and ask that our citizens reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787. Are there any uh, public announcements to be made at this time? Ms. McGrew, do you have any? I do have a couple. Tonight okay. there's a reception at the Arts Center for the Mayan Culture Heritage Month. There's a weaver who is an ambassador for Goodwill who's flown in from Guatemala to do a weaving demonstration this evening at the reception. I believe that's 6 to 8 p.m. And when is that? Tonight. tonight. Oh, it's tonight. So we need to hurry. I've already met, I already met the weaver this afternoon. And she's lovely, she isn't me she? A piece of the weaving, which is now it's just hanging in my office now. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. This Saturday we'll be having the dumpster days again. That's been a huge hit, very successful in helping clean up neighborhoods and helping neighbors take care of their yards and, and items that they have trouble getting rid of and maybe they can't drive to a landfill to get rid of their items. This Saturday, the dumpsters will be here at City Hall from 9 to 1. This is a concentration of the area of downtown and the streets of, to name a few, Chrysler, Mural, Roy, Jarvis, Archer, Marietta Hill, and Academy. So thank you very much, and if you live in the area, please bring your things that you need to get rid of, 9 to 1. I don't know the details on that one. Uh, the, have, um, who has it? Ms. Wilson, go ahead. Saturday is the 5K race for A Day for Reinhardt. It'll be in downtown Canton, and I'm sure they'll be delighted to have you. You can call the Reinhardt Office of Advancement and sign up. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I would say that uh, you've probably heard through the media that. Uh, uh, the, the Georgia Department of, of uh, Natural Resources has, has declared a level one drought response for 53 Georgia counties. You've probably seen it on TV, of which, city, uh, of which a Cherokee County is one of those. So we need to be aware of our water usage because it has been dry here, no doubt. And we've just had no rain in, in recent times. But they're, they're not saying you can't do a lot. Actually, the things that uh, a level one allows for uh, the uh, example of the following activities may be done at any time of the day under a drought response level one, irrigation of personal food gardens, uh, irrigation of a new and replanted uh, plant, seed, or turf may be done at any time of the day for 30 days after installation. A drip irrigation or irrigation soaking uh, hoses may be done at any time of the day and hand watering uh, with a hose with automatic cutoff or handheld container may be done at any time of the day. The general landscape watering may be done between the hours of 4 p.m. and 10 a.m. each day. Uh, so uh, there's, it's not very stringent right now, but, uh, you know, unless we get some rain, it could get even tighter. So think about conservation there.
the uh, ceremonies that Diane Minnick with the Upper Etowah River Alliance uh, spoke of at the last uh, council meeting uh, will be held. I think it's, uh, it's uh, the 16th, that's tomorrow, the 16th at 7 p.m. at Etowah River Park. It's a dedication ceremony um, of the Etowah River Park canoe launch. So anybody interested in that can attend that one. All right, I'll entertain them. Uh, before we consider to approve the agenda, I would like to amend, uh, amend the agenda to add an item F under old business, which would uh, add the consideration to waive the sign fee for the Fields of Faith organization. That's been done about every year, but we have to act on it anyway. Fields of Faith, uh, sign fee waiver. Yes. Do we not want to uh, omit CMD? Yeah. Omit what? All business CMD. We do. We haven't got to that, but that is correct. They have asked that it, uh, it be postponed. Do we have to vote to postpone it, or we just amend the agenda? I mean... Okay, all right. Well, item C and D uh, will be uh, postponed till October at the request of the applicant, <coughs> which is the annexation and zoning of the corner at Butterworth Road and State Route 20. Okay. Motion, motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. All right, under the, in, in your agenda package are the, are the minutes from the September the 1st, uh, uh, 2016 public hearing and September 1st, 2016 council min minutes. Um, the uh, council minutes, I understand, they have been revised and sent out uh, to all the council members. Are there any changes or corrections to those that were sent out as revised? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, September the 1st minutes as revised. So moved. We have a, se have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Okay, we don't have anyone tonight under the 10 minute public input since we're not talking about fire consolidation, I guess, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> Under the consent agenda, I will read those items uh, A through uh, E, and if there are any of those that you would like removed from the consent agenda for further discussion, uh, let me know. Item A, approval of the revised business travel policy. Item B, approval of the ordinance amendment to Canton Development Code CD uh, Central Business District to allow a restaurant with drive through facility. Item C, approval of the River Green Agreement to settle unused tap fee credits. Item D, approval of non-exclusive easement with State of Georgia Department of Defense, uh, Defense so that's uh, easement for water line over at the Armory. And item E, approval of the creation of a Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Any of those anyone would like removed? Oh, Mr. I have, Grant. I have a question on um, the revised ordinance on B, and I don't know if I should ask that now or if we should remove it. Yeah, ask it, it now. If those okay, I just, on um, the revised ordinance under the conditions uh, three, it said not to be adjacent to residential use. The question I had there is I know uh, on the Harris development that there's a proposed possible phase two residential uh, component possibility. Would that be in conflict with that? Would that be considered adjacent? And then also, we're talking about mixed use, which implies residential. So is that, should that read single family residential? Or I know the intent of it, and I, and I agree with the intent, but I'm wondering if I'm concerned about those two issues. Is, should I be or not? Councilman Grant, the intent of uh, that condition was to ensure that uh, that drive-through facility, the queue line would be on an opposite side of the building that contained the drive-through for many 
residential, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, on site or another part of the four acres or if it's a piece of property uh, elsewhere. Uh, the master mm -hmm. plan that uh, has been shown uh, with the drive through facility would comply with this condition, but if there are other uh, developments that come in uh, in the future uh, or with a notice rec or parcel mixed use, there was a reason for that uh, restriction. We'd have master plan review of that, yes. of the next one anyway, so we could look at that. Okay, thanks. Do you, do you want to take it off? You only no, that, that's, on that's the only okay. question. Uh, Mr. Rust? I just had one comment. I, I think what you're trying to say is adjacent means adjacent. And in this case, I, I kept a copy of this plan. It's definitely on the other side of that four acre piece. So that's certainly an attempt to not let it be adjacent. Yeah, you wouldn't want a situation where you've got a commercial building with a drive through that's right beside a mixed use building that's got residential upper floor because that person is going to hear the, the drive through. Right. You know, on well, we're basis. going to pains to make sure that the drive-through is is a controlled access and egress. So, certainly, that's very important. I agree. Thank you. Any any other items uh, for further consideration at all? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion for the consent agenda. Under old business. Uh, discussion of the status uh, of the uh, for the enforcement of the rental property agreement registry uh, in the Unified Development Code. We don't have anything to discuss tonight. We we've discussed this since our last meeting on the staff side, and so when we come to council in October, we're going to have an administrative policy to bring before you, showing how we're going to interact uh, enact this piece of code and, and enforce it from that point forward. Okay, any questions about that? All right. Item B under old business, discussion and possible action on Canton Place in North, I'm sorry, did I miss something? No, I just said it. Oh, I thought I'd lost my place again. Discussion and possible action on Canton Place in Northside Cherokee Hospital Master Sign Plan. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. second. And a second. Uh oh, Ms. Wilson, you got something else? No. Okay. I do. I do. Okay. We got this piece of paper, uh, the email hand delivery uh, today. That you got today, Ken? From yes. North, from uh, North side. Came in uh, yesterday, I believe. Okay. But it. I, I think they're just trying to withdraw phase two, and get us to vote on phase one. Is phase that one plus the. Uh, the change uh, on 40. Sign at uh, State on Route 140. 140. Right. So all we're going to do is delay the, the second phase, which is going to be delayed year. Correct. Yeah. Is what they have uh, requested. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Grant. Yes, and so the documents we got um, two days ago, that's the sign added to State Route 140? Correct. Okay. Um, my comments are that I mean, this, the sign's very attractive and all, but we had just received this, you know, a day and a half ago, and, and the council hasn't had a chance to discuss it, you know, as, as a council, because um, we didn't see it in the work session. And, you know, I, I do think this is a, a big deal and an important decision. Um, and I would just, I mean, I would like to have more time that we, that we could discuss as a council and, and just talk about, you know, what ramifications it has for the future and all. Um, like I say, I, I think it's very attractive, but it, you know, to me it's a lot to kind of take in and consider, you know, at this time. But I wouldn't want a whole lot of time, and I wondered if we could, you know, even have a special session, you know, called session uh, with the development department. but. It is a massive amount of uh, material. Can, can you tell me if any of the signs are on uh, right of way of the streets? From this master plan, uh, there's not specific uh, way to determine as to whether they're proposed to be within right of way. Uh, within our memorandum to city council, 
uh, was uh, expressed that uh, the signage would have to be outside of the right of way. They would have to uh, comply with that or come back to city council. So, so you really can't tell from this material the exact location it, of the it signage. It appears that it's outside of the right of way in regards to uh, the numbering sequence that you see in red. For instance, uh, the number one. No. I mean, is it showing like uh, 10 foot off the right of way? As a, that uh, could not be determined uh, off of these drawings because of a, a scale factor. It does appear that on, like I said, uh, the sign uh, number one, which is on page one, if uh, you look very carefully at uh, the uh, line portions uh, that is uh, gray and white, the uh, one inside the red circle does appear to be behind the right of way line that's shown for Northside Cherokee. But would it have Boulevard? to be 10 feet off the right of way? Uh, in accordance with uh, our sign regulations, yes. That's, a, that's with our sign regulations? Yes. Okay. I noticed uh, on the information that you had you had provided, uh, I guess, back at the end of August, the directional signs that are mentioned there, um, uh, proposed uh, size exceeds the allowed two and a half square feet, and a directional sign of this size would not be allowed in, in GC and OI zoning districts. Uh, and also under the, the uh, hospital identifier signs, wall signs are permitted in GC and OI zoning districts. Businesses are allowed one wall sign per road frontage. Northside would be allowed two wall signs due to the property having two road frontages. The third requested wall sign would require, require a variance in, in general commercial slash OI zoning districts. Sign size in terms of square feet is based on the linear length of the front of the building. A business is allowed two square feet of wall sign for each linear foot of building front. Okay. Um, the north elevation wall sign indicates letter height of 50 and 3 eighths inch inches. This exceeds the height allowed uh, by 2.38 inches and would require a variance. Um, and then uh, item six under that, the sign code does not address this particular type, which is emergency room identifier, certainly. And that, that would be entirely up to the council. The address signs on the buildings, which according to uh, these signs are exempt from permitting requirements as long as they are between four inches and eight inches in height and a minimum uh, stroke width of 0.5 inches. Anything larger would require a variance, but not a permit. The proposed height is 36 inches as opposed to the uh, re re regulation of four inches and eight inches. Um, that in phase two? Huh? Is all that in phase two or phase one? Phase one. Phase one. Phase one? Yeah, that's phase right. one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the size, and it mentions here, uh, future hospital campus signs are shown in uh, figures <coughs> F1 and F14. These signs are shown to be at a definite size in terms of size and height. The additional monument signs are allowed due to there being multiple business buildings on a single lot. These signs would be allowed in GC and OI zone. The size of the sign is based on square footage of the building. The application does not provide the size of the future buildings. So, how, how do you, how would you, how would you, per, not, maybe not permit, but how would you allow a certain size sign if it's based on square footage and yet you didn't know what the square footage was? The Unified Development Code uh, does allow with a mixed use master plan development to submit a master sign package with its own sign standards for city council consideration uh, that uh, would not uh, be the same as sign regulations for general commercial office institutional. In regards to the specific question you asked, and uh, you could not uh, determine uh, the square footage that would be a, 
allowed without knowing what the uh, lineal footage of uh, the front wall of the buildings would be within phase two. Okay. It says the proposed sign area for each type sign is 27 square feet. That is significantly less than the smallest allowed at 132 feet. Okay. But it could be larger than what would be permitted or might be might be built there. Is that right? Possibly. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. If, if, if I'm listening to what the mayor is reading and I'm wondering if the hospital already has pretty definitive plans to keep going up so the size of that building in phase two will get bigger. If we didn't allow two inches now, a deviation from our current code, wouldn't they be allowed to put up a bigger sign <laughs> when the building gets bigger? No, because uh, the uh, size of the wall signs is based upon the lineal footage of the frontage of the building. The, but won't, uh, won't, wouldn't the frontage of the building grow when they add four no, floors? No, if you're going up, the width uh, oh, 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 I see. Oh, I see. Increase. It's not the total width, it's just the linear. Okay, I got you. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I don't really have a problem. I've just had a hard time getting my mind around the full scope. And this is awesome. It's massive. And to really see what it is. And, and one thing I think that we have to try to do or should do is to consider what may happen down the road. Are we going to vary our signs to that extent and other should other developments come in uh, the same way? We've got to be able to treat everybody the same, you know, at least the best we can. So, but uh, that's, that's the and, only. And there again, Mr. Mayor, part of uh, this whole idea that's within the Unified Development Code for the master sign package for these mixed use master plan developments is to allow city council to consider size signage that would not necessarily meet the sign regulation size but these larger mixed use master plan developments because of the size of the developments, the scope of the developments, the scale of the buildings uh, themselves might lend itself to something uh, other than uh, what's contained within the sign regulations. But and what? By but that what? means, uh, city council has a way to look at uh, sign packages on these master plan uh, developments uh, on a case by case basis. So, while we may allow one entity to have a much bigger sign than a than another entity is what you're saying. It's just strictly up to us, basically. It's just whatever Correct. we want to do. The city Council approved a uh, signage for Kent Marketplace that was uh, larger than what uh, the sign regulations would have allowed at the time that Kent Marketplace was built. Riverstone uh, Shopping Center was allowed monument signage that was larger than what the sign regulations would have allowed for general commercial. Why don't we change our regulations if, if, if this keeps coming up like this, you know, I mean, what, what good are the regulations actually? I mean, why aren't we telling some you can do this, some you can't do this? That's the only thing that kind of, kind of. And it gets to the scale bit. and size of the development. Uh, and that's something if city council wants the staff to look into, we can certainly look into amendments to the sign regulations to, to look at some of these uh, factors in regards to size and scope of developments, uh, mixed use developments, things of that nature, so that there is a little bit of variety within what's yeah. allowed. I realize it's a little bit different, but I somehow know that I feel like this one business, a smaller business, ought to be able to advertise a sign the same as a bigger business, you know, under the same guidelines, square footage or whatever the building is, you know, but that's just me. Mr. Grant? It's, it's, you know, I, I, I welcome our sign ordinances. I think we've done a very good job of controlling our signage uh, throughout the city and I know a lot of surrounding cities haven't done such a great job, so I, I think we've done that. And I understand the case by case and the master uh, plan um, according to scale. I mean, that, that all makes sense to me. I think what's different here is the scale is massive <laughs> uh, and, and 
there is a lot of detail and it makes sense to me and especially in the, the, the hospital and the directional signs I know that needs to be different I understand that I just want to make sure we all understand the details of what we're what we're doing here and I know we talked about the the um, you know, adding the Canton Place sign to that phase one but now that I'm looking at it visually it's a very different sign because it is for you know the commercial development versus you know the the hospital wayfinding and all and and I don't I don't feel comfortable considering those together necessarily now that I see yeah. that because it's 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 very different while I understand this the hospital signage the wayfinding needs to be different the emergency signage and all that the wayfinding needs to be different I was, and I was under the impression that the signage there at 140 primarily would be to identify well the hospitals down here and it almost seems secondary on that sign so that's what I'm kind of struggling with right now and just kind of understanding the, the, the sign scale at and 140 the in the amendment letter if you'll look at it closely it on the eight and a half by 11, it doesn't show up, but uh, that does uh, reflect uh, a portion of that uh, signage being dedicated for Canton Marketplace. It also does reflect welcome to the city of Canton uh, within uh, that overall sign. But certainly, uh, you know, city council uh, uh, does not want to approve that uh, at this point in time, uh, have discussions, uh, think about it, your decision. I'm here to answer questions as best okay. I can. Mr. Peppers. Uh, one thing that I might suggest, uh, I know that the topic came up at least in Northside that, you know, as, as you're going on Highway 20 eastward, um, you know, they would like to have some signage in uh, conjunction with Canton Marketplace that shows what's on that, on that boulevard. Sure. Um, and likewise, that's what they've tried to accommodate on this end is, is giving a, a, a nod of the head to Kent Marketplace from 140 and giving a nod of the head to the hospital from 20 uh, as you go southward. Um, the one thing I would make is a suggestion, though, on this sign um, on 140. Um, actually, there's two things. Uh, you've got the piece that's an optional sculpture. And, and, and Sculpture and art's one of those things that's very difficult to approve as it relates to a sign because everybody's idea of art is very different. Um, and, and, and that may be a piece that's a little bit hard to approve as part of the package. The other thing is, if, and, and I appreciate them doing this and, and placing that section on the sign that says welcome to Canton specifically, if that's, if that's a gateway sign for the city, you know, we're going through a branding study right now. We might want the ability to change that lettering to whatever font comes out or anything like that from that standpoint. So I think from that end, we, we would want to control at least some ownership in that little bit of section of the sign to make sure it matches whatever the city brand is. And that's something that you might want to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I mean, I think this is all really great dialogue and we haven't had the chance to have this dialogue because we just got this two days ago. So I was kind of going back to my first comments that we could just have a little bit more time to or even a short work session to go into the details but Mr. Russ? I'd like to make a motion to delay this to the work session and then vote on it in a month yeah or even sooner I think we could if, if it if it needed to be done we could we could certainly move sooner than that if we had to I realize that Joe Allen has a motion on the floor, but according to your partner, Jeff, we can do that. A delay is a subsidiary, so you can entertain it first. Yeah, so we can delay, the, we can vote on the delay first. If someone second, do they second. Do a second on the motion? Second. Do we, uh, is there any other discussion about that? Uh, I, I, th I just think, why don't we wait a little bit? It's such an important decision that we, we just want to get it right for the city and for Northside. And if it delays it a month, it probably isn't going to change anything they have to do. We want to approve this, but we want to approve it right for both, both the city and for Northside. So uh, maybe, maybe, pardon? Go ahead, uh, Councilman Russ. No, no, go ahead. It's my understanding that uh, Northside uh, would uh, prefer if city council would consider a called uh, meeting of some sort 
the first Thursday in October is uh, uh, going to put them uh, behind uh, with construction and signage is what they've uh, indicated to me just now. Are, are you and saying that we need to make a decision by the first of October? Is it well, they want a special call meeting so we can do it faster. <laughs> well, the first, okay, the... Uh, yeah, we got, we got a long period. And when, is it when, when is the first meeting, October the 6th, 7th? Yeah. Uh, as a clear first, the first is a Friday. As a clarification, on that being a subsidiary motion, you have to table it to a specific date. You can't just table I it did. to. Yeah, I did. I want to go to the work session and vote a month from that. That is October the sixth. Uh, okay. The, uh, the first think, Thursday. Is that where you want to go? Uh, well, based on the fact you just got that information from Northside, they came up to tell you. Correct. That that's a problem for them. I I just don't know what we can do because. It seems like members of the council want to delay. Um, so I'm not sure if, if the motion doesn't pass and we go back to a vote with, with Joanne. Okay. So. okay, any other discussions? Uh, the motion is that we postpone until our work session. Uh, is, is that, are we considering that at a point that we could also make a decision if we chose to do so at that point, at that, that night? I would assume we could do that anyway, right? Mr. Pepper, can I ask a question? Is, is, is the concern from the council just about the gateway sign versus the internal signage? Well, I, I'm, I'm listening to Councilman Grant say that there's a lot of data and we haven't had enough time to really look at it and I really respect his opinion, so I would like to have him have a little more time. If he can do that between now and, are you gonna be here? For that first meeting, no. I'll be over the first meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So okay. if if they're asking us to vote immediately after that work session, if we can decide, then we can probably do that. Is that so? My motion. I'll change my motion to work session with a possible action on on that issue at the work session. Vote okay. to vote. Okay. And you. Is that is that good for you? Is that good for you? Yes. Okay. Do you have something? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, your, your, microphone, your microphone's you off. The work session to create the problem for him. Fair. Oh, that was wrong. <laughs> uh, they're saying if we wait till the work session, it creates a problem for them. If we, I'll just suggest this, is the, the, the signage on the property the problem or would the wafer, the one Mr. Grant is speaking about the wayfaring sign, with delaying till October hurt that one, or is it just the other signs, or what's the situation there? Really, what we were really being asked to do, Ms. Jennings, thank you, um, was phase one, which is the internal signs to the hospital, which was talked about at the work session two weeks ago. Um, that's what the urgency is to approve this amendment with this other other sign, the, the welcoming sign, that's not quite so urgent. So what we're hoping is the phase one signs which, you, which you've had before, which, you've, um, which we filed with the application back in August and with what we discussed at the work session two weeks ago, that's what we were hoping would be approved um, tonight. The other one, we're fine if that waits. What if we withdrew the, um, the 140 from being put into phase one and we could put that in later when it becomes more in, uh, timely? Yeah. And yeah. then we could vote perhaps on what was originally presented to yes. us, but for the fact that phase two was pulled out of it. So that's easy. It's pulled out. Yeah, that would be fine. So then, then really we're basically getting the paperwork we were originally presented. There's no change. Correct. And if we want, if you really need something done on that entry at 140, we can take that up individually. Is that, will that work? Yes. So then, uh, do I need a, a motion and a second to withdraw my motion to delay? I probably do. Jeff, do I need that? I think that you can withdraw your motion. I withdraw my to motion delay. to delay. Okay. So you're back to your original, what, yeah, what was the Dwellings, original motion? Dwellings, uh, to motion approve the entire. To approve. Well, can you can you pull that out to pull that yeah, one? Yeah. She she wants to modify it. To approve, to approve the, the, uh, 
with, with the modification of the uh, 140 being included in phase one. I make a motion to approve the Canton Place Master Signage Amendment to the application in phase one. Okay. Any it, other discussion? Is that, it, it, as are, long we as are we taking the gateway sign off? Yeah, is that, is it that didn't. What that motion saying? didn't take it out. Do you want to take that out? Can you take, can you make the motion the so that that 140 being entered into phase one is out of it? Because right now you, uh, you want to approve the 140 sign being in it. Yes. You want it to be in it? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm not oh. comfortable with the 140 sign, but if we want it to be in it, I mean, I can't vote for it with that gateway sign in there. And I, I do want to say that I, I understand, and, and as, as I stated earlier, I understand the hospital sign, the wayfinding yeah, sign, the information signs, signs do needing to be different. And I understand that those are probably on a tighter schedule. I do want to acknowledge, however, though, <clears throat> those do have a lot of detail to them. And while the application may have been made in August, we only received that package a few days before our last work session. So we have really not had a lot of time to look at these details. And, and I'm comfortable with those signs, but uh, you know, it, it, we haven't had the luxury of really, really look, having the time to really look at all those details. But again, going back to my original concern is, is that those signs are very different, serve a different, very different purpose than the, the entrance gateway sign at 140. So that. We had a large package that we all reviewed with Northside Cherokee. Um, I asked all the questions I had at that time, and I'm satisfied with what they presented. That's why I didn't want to take anything out of the motion. I want to approve, I, I make a motion we approve it as they submitted. Okay, we, we have a motion to second. Uh, I did, we're I still did. in the discussion uh, phase. Uh, Mr. Russ? Yeah, if this motion gets defeated, and Joe Owens gets defeated, I, I'm still free to make a motion to exclude the 140 signage. And we'll see how this plays out. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, okay, we've got a couple of lights on there. Uh, <clears throat> if not, if no other discussion, then I'll entertain a motion to, uh, I'll, be, I'll uh, entertain the voting on the, her motion to approve as, as submitted. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Okay. Uh, no, three, three. Uh, I will. I would say uh, no. And uh, next, I, I if like you want to. Make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to accept the master plan as presented with the exclusion of the withdrawal, with the inclusion of a withdrawal of phase two signage plan and withdrawal of the phase one inclusion of the 140 signage. So that sign will be removed, phase two will be removed and I make a motion we, we, we approve it in that state. Are you saying approve phase one? With the, with the fact that the phase one no longer includes the 140 signage. And okay. phase, yes, that's exactly right. Yes, Chief, thank you. Okay. So that's, that's my motion. I too glad. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Okay. Ken, did you, did you tell me that, I don't know if this is phase one or two, but did you tell me that you couldn't tell whether uh, these signs were on or off the right of way? Yes. Is that what had, I understood? We had had that uh, discussion, and I tried to explain uh, that it appears that uh, the signage, even within phase one. I, I know it may appear that way, but the bottom line is that they're not on the right of way, right? Period. I mean, you can't put a sign on the right of way. By our can sign you? regulations, uh, no. It appears on uh, the drawings within the master plan that that one sign along Northside Cherokee would be outside of the right of way. Okay. When you look at it, it looks like it's about as far off as the guardrail there, you know, and I would assume that guardrail is, is, is on the right of way, but it may just be the way that's been superimposed on there. I believe that uh, to be the case, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we looked at that other drawing that had some topo lines and everything on it, and it had the small red circle with the number one that was on page one. 
and that showed uh -huh. to be behind the line that uh, I noted as being the right-of-way line. As to whether that was exactly 10 feet, I could not answer that question off of that uh, 11 by 17, but uh, okay. that does show to be outside of the right-of-way. Oh, Mr. Grant. So even in a special master plan approval, regulation still requires signage to be off right away? There's nothing in this that specifies one way or the other as to whether they want any of the signage within the right of way or not. Uh, if they wanted some of it to be within the right of way, that language should have been included within the master plan. But it's not. I didn't see it anywhere, no, sir. Okay. And if it's not, our regulations would not allow it to be in right of way, correct? Correct. Isn't it county right away, not city no, right away? No, that's a city right away. City right away. Yes, that's a city manager. Aren't they prohibited from putting it on city right away unless we were to approve it mistakenly, I guess, right? We the could give city, them their, their, a, a the blessing to do something. The uh, all of that street last year. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 Any other comments? Do you have something? Okay. Your light's on. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's the, the, other one. The, button. the other one. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay, you have the motion uh, uh, to approve, I uh, guess, phase one as submitted of the master plan sign ordinance. Um, any other discussion at all? Questions? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. Well, I just, I just oh, want to get, it done, get it done the right way. It's okay. We got it. Item C and D were uh, postponed to October meeting, the annexation uh, and the uh, zoning at uh, Mountain Oil Express. Item E, discussion and possible action on committee appointments. I have, uh, I would like to make some nominations and I would like to thank the, the council members that sent names in and made suggestions and actually on these committees others made them. Uh, I would like to have been able to appoint every one of them that, that sent it because there were some very, very good names uh, submitted. Uh, but unfortunately I could not and, and I have got the agreement of these individuals to serve on the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, of course, Wanda Roach and Cleveland Chambers uh, are coming off, uh, and Lewis Klein is a is a member up for reappointment. The nominations would be uh, uh, for Wanda Roach's, or it doesn't matter which which slot. They're all the same term, be four year terms, which actually began July the first. So it'd be uh, four years ending June thirtieth, four years from now. Uh, I would like to nominate Rod Drake, who lives in the uh, Great Sky area. He has agreed to, to uh, uh, participate and be, become a member. Earl Darby, the Darby Funeral Home, and uh, Corey Wilson with the Bank of uh, North Georgia. Also, we have the, uh, under the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, I'd like just to reappoint those that uh, uh, are up Stacy Yawn and Bob Rugg, and these are uh, three-year terms. So, because they hadn't been on there all that long and got the training and just getting started and everything. And uh, one one slot uh, under the International Property Maintenance uh, uh, Code Board of Appeals, uh, Jeremy Se Jeremy Sexton. I'd like to reappoint Jeremy, and that will be for a three-year term. He was the first one-year term, I think, that expired on that International uh, Property Maintenance Code. So that, that's all that I have, and I would uh, uh, offer these as uh, nominees. Do we have to approve? Do we need a motion or second? Do we have a motion? Uh, uh, Mr. Grant, you make the motion? Yes. Uh, the motion, and Mr. Yawn seconds the motion. Any other questions or discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> and the last item of the under old business is the field 
fields of faith sign fee waiver. We've done this about every year, but you know, since we're waiving a fee, it needs to be done. I, I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, does anybody have any questions or anything on that? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve that. So, second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Goodwin made the motion. Mr. Russ seconded it. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. Mr. Peppers. I have two items tonight. Uh, one, I had sent you out a memo earlier this week about the um, Federal HIDA Task Force, which is in Atlanta, uh, that we as a police uh, agency participate in. Uh, we provide an officer that that we pay the salary of and benefits of to travel into Atlanta. We pay for the vehicle for that individual. And then as part of his actions with that federal task force, if there are funds that are recovered based on um, uh, seized assets and things like that, we receive a share back. Uh, and looking at the three-year history and our participation in the program, we're getting about $9,000 back a year. Um, and and uh, what what the police chief and his uh, uh, officers have, have looked at, his leadership has looked at, is uh, withdrawing from HIDA. Uh, we're spending about $50,000 a year or a little bit more to be a part of the program. We're not really recouping those funds, and they would like the ability to pull that position back in-house uh, and, and, and convert it into a detective's position that could be used for special victim uh, unit. Uh, that I believe Chief Mitchell had mentioned during the budget process this past year. Uh, and we wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, it's not something that we have to uh, legally remove ourselves from, but it's a, it would be an administrative thing. So that's the direction that I would, I would uh, uh, prefer that the city move into, and so I wanted to bring that to your attention. From that and we, we would vote, vote, vote on this at the next meeting. We, we'll look into the agreement side as to what we might need um, I don't know that we need any action on it. I think we would just be. Oh, we, oh okay. Okay, yeah. Sound, yeah. Sounds logical to me. This would just be a personnel movement within the department. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Rust? Billy, is one of the reasons why there's only about 9,000 a year is because drugs are, have no street value for us. I mean, we can't do anything with them except burn them and throw them away. Well, I, I mean, part of it, they recover drugs, I would assume. Well, th they do, but, but my particular issue in this is that we have an officer who's serving at the discretion of another agency, so to speak, and, you know, that officer's spending their time in DeKalb County and Clayton County, and, and we're already part of a drug task force here in Cherokee County with the other agencies here in Cherokee County, and that seems to have more of an impact for our citizens. Um, I don't necessarily think it's our responsibility to pay for the manpower to deal with drug issues in other counties. <clears throat> well, I want to just thank you for doing that because sometimes there's a tendency for to just keep doing something whether it's working or not. So I appreciate doing that. Yeah. How long have we been, been doing that? How long have we been in that organization? Almost four years. Four years? Okay. So we uh, spent $200,000 to put it in perspective. And brought in 36000 so yeah. roughly. It's not a good investment, is it? No. Well, that's not the that's not the real reason why you do that, but there's the other well, reasons understand. don't make yeah. sense either. So we feel like we have better needs here locally that we can use that staff for. Well, thank you for looking into it and doing yeah. that. Okay. The other item I have for you, uh, I had also sent out an email to you uh, earlier this week. Uh, we have had a chance to sit down with uh, the uh, construction company that got the bid for Wooded Mountain Trail. Um, we received their construction schedule and had a, had a couple of concerns based on their start dates. We would like to have that project start, given the time we're at now, have them forced to a start date of October 1. That would give them a chance to go ahead and start mobilizing equipment and things like that from that date. And then that 90-day completion period for them would start October 1 and run basically uh, right up until Christmas. And that's what their schedule's basically called for. But it, it signifies for both groups we expect you to start on the, uh, the 1st of October on the project. Uh, and then we'll notify all the property owners and Wooded Mountain Trail, get them a copy of the construction schedule as well um, as getting information to the Homeowners Association uh, so that we can keep that up to date for those residents that are going to be impacted as part of the project. Okay. Um, 
I, uh, we, we had been waiting on one, and I think it had come in shortly after. Um, I, I don't think we had any outstanding signatures, no. Did we ever determine the cause of the, the gas break we know? That was somebody just screwed up and didn't do a locate properly? Um, so. No. Uh, well, yes. So we had the gas leak on old ball ground. Um, it, uh, it was an unmarked uh, Atlanta gas line. Uh, they had called in the locates like we do on all of our projects. They had identified their lines in the area, and this was a line that they weren't aware of of their own. And so when was we this hit real, it, Was it old or something? Um, I, I couldn't tell you the age on it, uh, yeah. but AGL did come out. They did make the repair. We're not responsible for any of the costs associated with that. Um, the other issue that you're bringing up was the was the sewer issue that Correct. we had along uh, the railroad tracks in the river. Um, the line that's there is an older line. It's a four-inch line, and uh, as the river has eroded part of the bank, it eroded the understructure of land in that line, and it snapped it. Uh, we have filed all of our reports with EPD on that. Uh, we did get the line uh, back together yesterday, and due to some force, uh, pressure issues in line, we ended up with a blowout further down the line. And so, uh, it, like I said, it's an older line. So uh, the fix that was put in, instead of, instead of continuing down that same path where we will have erosion issues along the river, they've cut it back 45 degrees and, and installed a new 300-foot uh, line, um, same diameter as, as what we have now, but further back into the right of way, so that we won't have as much issue with the erosions moving forward. Is that is that not on the opposite side of the river from the wastewater treatment plant? It's on the same side. Of it's the It's on river. the same mm -hmm. side. It is. It is. So it's 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 on it's between Sandy Hook, the Sandy Hook Shopping yeah. Center, and the wastewater plant along the railroad side of the river. Okay, I got you, yeah. Bill, Billy, yeah. when an issue like this comes up and you send Head Tabian out and there's an issue of changing the pipe, moving something, and spending money, at what point do, does he notify you when it's more oh, than we, more we than, were, more we than were notified immediately. The, we have a contingency to deal with issues like that within the fund. Uh, it's an emergency item. I mean, we have to clean it up. Uh, what we looked at was the fact that if we go in there and we – we repaired the pipe, and then we put in the rock to, that would be necessary to, to um, deal with the erosion issue along the river. Um, it's hard to get to, first of all. Uh, and second of all, the amount of rock that we were going to need to shore up that side of the river was going to be substantially uh, more expensive than just putting in a new line further back. But, but it involved 300 feet of line. Yes. Put, that, that just sounds like a lot. That, but, uh, you know. I'm just wondering at what point does Heptavian have to come to you and, and say, hey, we're going to spend 100 grand here, you know? Oh, it, was, it was done immediately. Yeah, okay. We received the, the issue on the second blowout happened yesterday afternoon. They began trouble, troubleshooting that portion of it. And then this morning the determination was that it would be easier to go back further. Yeah. And they'll be completed with a construction on that. Uh, this afternoon and cleaning up tomorrow. Well, we, so. we just we just spent our whole savings on the uh, policeman we pulled back. No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Thank you, Willie. Okay. That's Anything all else? No, okay. Sir. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We adjourn. Thank you. Oh.